Hello everyone and welcome back to Ash of God's Redemption and let's just continue where we left off. Which means we are moving on from the Watchtower and hmm, either going the Miller's Track or the Dry Riverbed. A roundabout way to avoid the dilapidated bridge, a narrow path through fields and barren lands. Okay. This road follows a dry riverbed winding along a rocky plain. Sure, let's go for that one. Mostly because it feels like there's more risk of bandits on that one. Also, I like the uh, the symbol that was here because that is the uh, Vegvisir. Uh, Viking symbol. Suddenly you come across a blood-curdling scene which looks like the site of a massacre. A plundered cart is surrounded by scores of dead bodies. You notice fallen guards who had performed their duty to the last breath, unarmed travelers and evidently some bandits whom their mates did not bother to bury. I mean, I, I doubt that there are any, but sure, let's look for survivors. One of your companions finds a gravely wounded man lying in the bush. He is still alive, but unconscious. You dress his wound, hoping that he might survive. In this instant, a company of guards rides into sight. They promise to treat the wounded man, so you leave him in their care and carry on with your journey. Your companions are happy that they were able to help the survivor. Good. Good for morale. Uh, Highland Plateau. A roundabout way along gravel rock slides and sharp cliffs. Okay. Well, we got to the village. A lone horseman comes into sight on the outskirts of Dinford village. His horse barely trudges along. It looks like it galloped without rest. The rider, just as exhausted, doesn't notice you until you catch up to him. Krieger raises himself in the stirrups, glares at the traveler, and shouts, Well, if it isn't Ramlin! Wait, you knucklehead, you! Don't you recognize your commander? Taken aback, the lad hunches his shoulders, but then sighs in relief when he recognizes Krieger. Uh, hello, Captain Krieger. What brings you here? I I'm on my way home. Not that far off, in fact. Krieger squints to scan the nearby houses. Your village isn't going anywhere, and your horse needs some rest anyhow. You'll ride the poor thing to death, you bonehead. Get off before it crushes you. Ramlin gets off the horse, and the exhausted animal collapses. You give the young guard a scornful glance and dismount in order to talk to him. Catch your breath, boy. Take it easy. Now tell me one thing. We passed a dozen hamlets yesterday, but didn't see a single person. Do you know what's going on? I... I don't know. I... I didn't stop by any hamlets. In fact, I didn't stop at all. Why did you abandon your post at the tower? We've spoken to Stein already. He told us about the great creature, about you breaking the gate, and about the crazy toll collector too. We want to hear your side of the story. So, the toll collector went mad, but Stein's alright? Gods be praised. Eh, well, I mean, he was. I was so afraid to go back because I thought the two of them might kill me. What now? Do I have to go back to the watchtower? Go visit your grandma first. It's not far. You'll manage on foot. Consider a short leave from Stein. Tell me, why didn't you go to Albius for help? I was so shaken with fright. I chose the familiar path to my home village without thinking. When I came to my senses, it was easier to keep going. My grandma's a great healer. Maybe she'll help me with the mark on my neck. And if she can, the men here is nearby. <sighs> so the plague's gotten to you too? I doubt a village healer can cure it. Go straight to the men here after you visit your grandma. It's safer that way. We don't have a spare horse, so you'll have to walk like Krieger suggested. 
Did you notice anything strange on your way? The footprints, maybe? Lots of them. Looks like a party on horseback, larger than yours. I didn't see them, even though I rode without rest. But my guess is that they're heading for our men here. We noticed that too. I can't imagine what company this could be. It's too big for a uh, Burkhanon patrol. Could it be bandits? I hope they don't find their way into your village. Never seen any bandits in these parts. We're not rich and there are several bows and lances in every home. They'd lose more than they'd gain. There's also a watch around the men here and they would come to our aid. All right, we'll deal with those mysterious horsemen later. How did you ever manage to ride for so long? Well, I know a sort of incantation bucks you up a bit. Learned it from my grandma. She's one of the Vandils. They know their stuff. Can you buck us up? Not yet. Too tired. Besides, I'm, I'm a bit of a weakling compared to my grandma. She's very skilled. And she's also got special powders and poultices. Hey. We'll definitely see your grandma on the way back. I hope she sells us some potions to keep us healthy. Well, we have to set out. Ha. Yes, of course. I'll drop my grandma's and then head to the men here. I suppose I'll return to Stein afterwards. Uh, don't think me a deserter, Captain. Just go already. Nobody's accusing you of anything. Visit your grandma or return to the watchtower. We are too preoccupied to care. Alright. I guess we'll let him discover on his own that Stein is dead. You pass a village. Its empty streets strike you as odd. A feeling of foreboding sets in, but you shrug it off. Right now, your only goal is the men here. Everything else comes second. The villagers must have gathered near the sacred stone, Flitz says. It's a holiday, after all. You agree, relieved. Indeed, villages near the men here traditionally hold spring festivities. Lost in thought, you don't immediately notice someone addressing you. Flit calls to you again, pointing to the road. There is something smoking there, and scavengers circle the black plumes. You slow down to take a closer look. Yeah, I mean, if the plague struck, and a lot of people were gathered for the festivities, I mean, I can see that becoming a slaughter. Which is not going to be a pretty sight. Yeah, there are definitely birds there. And yeah. That is not good. Definitely not uh, festive. That's precarious. A heap of corpses sits in the middle of the road. So many bodies, men and women, old and young, even children. There's a scaffold and some spears sticking out of the ground. The smell of blood makes you lightheaded. You trot closer, pulling back the reins of your horse. Scorched and torn asunder, these people died without making a sound. Their mouths choked with dirt. Severed limbs lie nearby. You turn around slowly. Gleda stands nearby, clenching the hilt of her sword. The others stand further back, frozen in place. Gleda sobs. She's petrified, unable to get a word out. Feeling sick, she runs off on stiff legs. You order your men to help Gleda and keep their distance. A low whimper draws your attention. You notice a pregnant woman struggling under the corpses. She suffered severe mutilation and won't last long without aid. It seems the woman will deliver her child within a matter of hours. If you leave her here to die, the child dies with her. If you bring her along, she'll be a great burden, not to mention the baby, if it survives. Oh boy. I mean, I don't know how far we are from the men here, but... 
Uh, I feel like. Hmm. Uh, let's go for that. Try to help. You wade through the corpses and pull the woman out from under the pile. Your companions come to your aid. Your group lacks a healer and it's pointless to return to the village. These corpses are all that's left of it. Seems you'll have to bring the woman to the men here. Yeah. Hopefully that's fine. Ah, okay. <laughs> it wasn't far. At least I'm guessing that's the stone they're talking about. The stones. You stop your company at the bridge. Suspicious figures stand on the other side. The watchmen's bodies hang nearby, close to the blood-soaked men here. Oh, great. Flit grows pale. Aren't they Ensis? The old chronicles call them abominations. I've read they wield enchanted blades that can fly. Reap time is upon us. You draw your sword. They've noticed us. Be on your guard. These aren't fools. They've gathered near the bridge. We'll have to dismount. Don't swarm a narrow path like this. You'll only get in each other's way. Glera, look after the wounded girl. You order some of your companions to get to the bridge and the others to guard the rear. It feels as if the Ensis want you on the bridge so they can bring it down. Yeah, I mean, that would be smart. Right, we cannot have Gleda with us. Let's get you then. You should have some range. Right. We can level you up. Uh, let's do that one. Oh, it's them! Time to see how difficult they are to beat. Um, let's move our archers back. You can also move back a little bit. You're there, you can throw your knife, so let's put you there. Okay. Uh, right. I'm not going to be able to reach anyone with that. Uh, neither will you. It's a bit annoying. the defense thing. Ouch. I'm sure this is gonna hurt. Well, I mean, it could have been worse. Uh, at least we hit back. Apparently. Very nice. I don't appreciate that. Not at all. Um... Come on, Flit. Almost. 
Almost. Huh. Interesting. Eh, sure. Let's do Fisk. I'm guessing he can't reach. No. I don't appreciate the retaliation, but sure. Ouch. Nice. Hey, stop that. Unfortunately, I don't think that you can get into position now. You guys are blocking the way. Alright, he'd already had his turn. Ouch. I feel sorry for Fisk. Do you? Nice. Ooh, nice. Very nice. Three level ups. You notice Ramlin on the bridge. He totters along, ice lifeless. Oh no. You know the horrors he's seen and want to approach him, but Gleda beats you to it. Ramlin hugs her and starts crying, nearly choking on his tears. You can't bring yourself to interrupt them. I'm guessing his grandma is dead. Gleda tries to calm him down while you listen to his jumbled account of what happened in the empty village. Judging by the bloodstains, some of the bodies were thrown in the river and some... He goes silent. You turn your attention to the men here. How's the woman doing? Is my main question right now. I wonder who it is that's trailing so far behind. Let's do that first, I guess. A lone survivor sits near the men here. You look like a monk. Hey, he's got a bag here. Hold! You mustn't! Abominations corrupted the sacred stone. It brings only death now. I saw people die after touching the men here. The last captives were dragged atop the stone by those ensis. Curses! So that's why they soaked it in blood. Damn witchery. Pieces of shit. Thanks for the warning in any case. And why in... Terminum, are you just sitting here? Aren't you glad to be saved? Uh. Honestly, I can't even stand straight. I had already given up hope, but I am truly grateful. Make no mistake. My name is Vi. I'm a wandering monk. Yeah, I could see that. Uh, that you're a monk, not that you're a wandering one. My prayers to the gods will be on your behalf from now on in every temple in Barkana. My name is Thorn Brennan. I'm a retired captain of the guard. 
You'll meet the others later. Before you get back to praying, tell me what happened here. Why did they let you live? The abominations didn't kill all the villagers right away. Some were captured and forced to uh, dig a mass grave until it came their turn to die. The men here were showered in blood. I'm all that remains. Why they need a grave? They didn't bury those they slaughtered on the other side of the bridge. I have no idea. I think they just wanted to torture us for as long as they could. They made it as painful and horrifying as possible. Those fiends, putting so many to the sword all in a single day. And the grave? We'll have to make use of it, I'm afraid. How did the watch manage to miss a whole mob of adversaries and captives? There were too many of them. First it was the cavalry, we didn't even know what hit us. Then we heard cries from the other side of the bridge, even more abominations. Some of them lacked mounts and stayed behind. The others rode away. So, that's what those prints were. The gods truly saved our necks. We could have just as easily ran into them on our way here. You mentioned captives? What happened to them? I heard screams and saw smoke rising. All dead. None were spared. Not children, nor the elders. Show me your neck. Are there any marks on it? So, this plague's gotten to you too? <laughs> Let me tell you something. You know those rare gems called Strixis? They fight off the corruption, but only for a time, until they burn out. We've heard about it already. Thanks, anyway. So how did you come across the Strixis and learn of their properties? I meant to meet with the abbot in one of the temple libraries. Then a scroll about the reaping caught my eye. Usually no one reads them. I mean, it's just a legend. And I've got a Strix in my beads. An old tradition. All of us wandering monks wear them. Why, you're the luckiest person I've ever met. The gods must be keeping you alive for some higher purpose. You've already told me what I needed to know. And what will you do now? We'll just have to try another men here. The Ensis couldn't have smeared blood on all of them, could they? There's a men here on the way to Ursus, with a small stockade around it. Perhaps the watchmen there will be able to beat the abominations back. Let me come with you. I have to get to the temple in Ursus and tell the abbot what I've seen. At least I won't be alone for half the journey if I join your company. Well, I can't just leave you alone now, can I? Just know that you must obey my every order without question if you wish to stay with us. Also, it would seem they've left us a couple of horses. How nice of them. In spite of everything he went through, the lad seems to have regained his senses. They killed everyone in my village. Some were thrown in the river, others... Well... You saw the corpses along the road, even people from the neighboring hamlets. Why do these bastards do this? I don't know. It seems like they savor pain and death. In any case, we've perched this place of abominations and we'll kill any more of them we find. My grandmother thought I was wizard material. She even gave me her amulet. Let me come with you, Thorn. I don't want to be a wizard, I want to be a warrior. That's why I joined the guards. Take the amulet, please. Sure. Take the locket. There's a Strix in your grandmother's amulet. That explains a lot. Strix has provided some protection from the reaping, so I manage our supply while we travel together. If you're ready to fight and follow orders, you can come with us. Is there anything else you'd like to say? Listening nervously, Ramlin opens his purse, hands shaking, and gives you several magic cards. How did you come by magical cards? They're heavy, like lead, and hot to the touch. And you say you don't want to be a wizard? These cards belong to my grandmother. I played with them when I was little. She said that if they got heavier, it'd mean playtime was over and something bad was brewing. I want to give them to you. You're my senior, you should use them. 
Do you even realize what they are? What's there to realize? Grandmother said that these cars aid those who wish to use magic or shield themselves from it, but have no shamanic power of their own. They're Kimran, and the Kimra themselves are said to be descended from those abominations. I've heard of them, wasn't expecting that they'd suddenly gain power. I want a couple myself. Who could have guessed that ancient trinkets would be of use? The reaping started, Thorn. What used to be superstition and legend is now manifesting through magic. You must have noticed that some items are displaying special properties. The cards are no exception. What use are your cards? You can normally figure out what a card does by the picture. They're not for wizards, remember? They're for those deprived of such power, so each carries a clue. Easy as falling off a horse. Grip the card tightly and use your will to direct its power. They're useful, no arguing that. But I'm more at ease with a sword at my hip. You can't scatter an enemy squad with a hand of cards. Who knows? I've never used them myself, but it's possible that a card might trump a weapon. Everyone can use them. It's worth remembering. Why are some broken? They're not broken, just incomplete. I remember when my grandmother got hold of a handful of shards. She assembled the picture and then the shards sort of glued themselves together. Do you suggest I hunt for these shards everywhere I go? It's up to you. People have always collected fragments of these cards. Even though they have no idea of their true value, using them as amulets and souvenirs. That's why you'll find many merchants selling them. Same with items uh, which contain strixes. Thank you, but it's time we left. Take care with these cards. Anyone can use them. Sometimes it's better to rely on a weapon instead of standing around and waiting for something magical to happen. I expect you to do more than just stand there. If you can cast proper spells, do it. And thank you for the plaques. I have a feeling we'll need them. Well, you can count on me. And make haste. There's something strange and evil emanating from the men here. I wouldn't tarry. Nice. You watch Ramlin go and notice the commotion near the wounded woman. Leda stops you as you run up. She's giving birth, Dad. Chase them all off and let Ramlin do his thing. Seems like he's the only one who knows what to do. Everyone runs around looking for clean water and rags. You don't remember feeling such pressure even when commanding a company of soldiers. After all the effort, you're finally rewarded with a baby's cry. Gleda looks at you woefully. The baby's safe, but we couldn't help the mother. She'd gone through too much. I'll search the supplies of the watch. Maybe I can find some milk, but we need to find a safe place for the baby. We shouldn't delay. A burial near a men here usually requires special permission, but none of that matters to you now. You decide against burying the bodies by the road. At least the fallen beside the men here have found a common grave. With no further business here, you prepare to depart. You notice Gleda is deep in thought. Before you can say a word, Gleda speaks up. Dad, why didn't you let me go on the bridge, Dad? Am I a bad fighter, or were you going easy on me during training? You feign surprise, and who else would care for the wounded? Our men aren't exactly a nurturing bunch, so I put my trust in you. And judging by how you handled childbirth, I wasn't wrong to do so. As for going easy on you during training, that's complete and utter nonsense. Call Brett as a witness. You turn to the lad. He nods agreeably. Lord Brennan never singles anyone out. But he really had it out for you, Gleda. Maybe that's why you're better than most. You can tell that Gleda is taken aback by all the praise and decide to seize the moment. Grab your stuff, all of you. The child's going with you, Gleda. There's a squad of Ensis prowling about, so get back in those saddles, everyone. Make haste. Eh, we'll check this out first, though. Now is a good time to tidy up and give orders. Yeah, let's level people up. I like that one getting more distance. Mm. 
And let's make that better for you. Flit. Um, Brett, I guess we'll do that as well. Alright. I wonder how what we're going to do to deal with that. Leave the men here, Valley. Nothing more to do here. It's time to head In out. In enemy territory, a campfire gives warmth, but the cold gives protection. Yep. Shadow Clan's code for warriors of peace. Year 1002 since divine retribution. Okay. Spring Equinox. Kingdom of Frisia. The city of Voden. A procession approaches the city. Yeah, I can see that. Hundreds, no, thousands, walk to Voden, shackled and closely guarded. You observe the surroundings from a tall rampart. It is your job to foresee any threats, especially those another might overlook. Something menacing is in the air. It might have something to do with the prisoners. You are a bodyguard of the highest rank, a warrior of the Shadow Clan. Your client, Count Pelko Soturi, shows you off like a golden belt buckle. It makes no difference to you. In the end, you are loyal to your clan. Uh, the streets are full of gawkers, city dwellers and villagers who brought their whole families to the festival. However, temple inquisitors, no more itinerant entertainers preside over the ceremonies. They offer a special kind of entertainment. There will be uh, executions and torture to uh, commemorate the spring equinox. This time, there will be an astonishing number of victims. The city will drown in blood. Nice. How delightful. <clears throat> Not. Anyway, that is the end of this episode. Thank you so much for watching. Please consider leaving a like and subscribe. And I will see you next time. Bye.